Lore of Adesia Part 2. Everything mentioned in this segment may or may not be slightly different within the main timeline of the Divine Threedence series. However, it is a direct source of factual information if need be. Generals. Elite leaders tasked with the sole purpose of controlling a nation. Foods, materials, land, events, and all the happenings that occur within a Sera are always moderated by its generals. Or if their wits are also some of the strongest warriors Adesia has to offer. Some adore the actions of their generals, while others seek to mask their existence entirely. A common saying being, everything is all fine and dandy until the generals decide to bring back the old days. Then you won't think what they're doing now is so bad. The history behind this line of work is rather riveting. First came councils, then balancers, leaving generals to be introduced to a daisy at last. The first publicized general was for Roar in 801. Nadale was a balancer who remained at the top of his guild after the decade of slumber, a constant war between 790 and 800. Initially in 790, Nadale followed another balancer who had their own grudges and motives. Nadale's oath as a balancer left him vexed and he no longer felt his stay. In truth, half of his comrades empathized with him and followed him into his new guild named Nalstrud. Nadale stayed close to all those who joined him and even helped fight off against other guilds who attack innocent or immobile guilds and Sarahs. Nadale's charisma allowed him to grow allies to create his own Sarah in 797. His whereabouts still unknown to the council that was once over him. When Nadale's name was identified as one of the uncounseled seraphs and territories in 799, he was eventually visited in the year 801. Nadale's connections with his people opened the council's eyes to a new role that seraphs could and should have. Obviously, Nadale wanted the title to reflect his name, Fernads, yet they eventually agreed upon the title, General. Nadale would take on the general title within his Sarah as a gimmick before it was official. During the years of 803 through 810, Nadale and the council would discuss how generals should operate within their Sarah. Most importantly, the level of dynamics between a general and a council of the same Sarah. Alas, problems such as the maximum generals a Sarah could have and magical requirements delayed the already demanding task. By year 811, Many of these problems were solved and Nadale and the council began to create a trial test among the Sarahs. Any balancer above the age of 23 could participate, but a needed requirement that was never told was a stage 2 or higher sustain in Dermal. The abundance of information within the test demanded that all Sarahs needed to have at least one balancer to obtain and share the information throughout their lands. A new class of balancers set a flock of crows towards anyone who dared chase after the position. Before and during when the trials became live in 815, many auctioneers were killed or sabotaged. It was proved that those who wanted power were completely eliminated from the test, reaching scores as low as 98, whereas the average was 135 out of 200 being the max. The duration of evaluation lasted five hours, all included a handwritten test, verbal questions, and real-world exercises. Nadale had passed naturally, so it was up to the council to decipher the best picks between them all. In 818, the true test had arrived with plentiful amount of changes. Answers had been widened and rulings were stricter. Civilians also now took part in choosing generals through ballots. The minimal age increased to 25, and that the position of a general could only be obtained by those born within that Sarah. Many misunderstood this code and believed they still apply if both of their parents were born in that Sarah. Between 819 and 824, the first cast of generals were in play. Many balancers left the program after realizing the new responsibilities they would have to be held accountable for, while others had left from stress or had died and replaced. After their finalization in year 824, generals had a great weight set against them instantaneously. 45 Sarahs and a total of 135 generals. Not only were their mistakes detrimental, but demands had skyrocketed and orders rained down upon them. The counsel of each Sarah would only help their general when major choices were made, 
or when they had to rectify clearly destructive commands. All but two Sarahs had more than one general, with two particular Sarahs not having any. Telepathy had not been discovered until 833, so generals had to use handmade technology, walkie-talkies, you could say, to communicate. These devices were called magic orates, morate, but was conjoined with the Mongol line of devices in the 850s as the technology became more available. Morates were easily deflected with Kansietsu, however. Focus stage three waves of Kansietsu could disrupt a Moritz signal from 50 yards away. To compensate, many generals decided to stick within distances based on their Niroku, so that at least one general was just to fly away. Generals among war used these weaknesses to ambush all generals of another Sera at the same time, taking over their nation within days. Other Seras grew bonding experiences from not having sizable lows mutually. The following years until 830, generals were quite lenient with balancer behavior. Some Seras still had over 400 balancers, many of which who did more than what their power suggested. It was an oversight on the generals, as the council had believed it should have been obvious that they should have informed the balancers of what they could not do anymore. With a clear opening in place, majority of generals signed a pact that would cease invasions between 832 and 834 so that all of them could reteach their balancers. The council approved this request, and although it didn't remove all advancements, it was plenty of time for all balancer operations to be recoded. In 839, the council and generals had added more restrictions and freedoms to generals. A few of those being, generals could no longer forcibly turn into a balancer for the purpose of engaging with other Sarahs, have an active list of all those they would want to become balancers, leave their Sarah without telling their active council, go off radar after meeting with another general, obtain the position without three years as a balancer, and the list goes on. On the other hand, a Sarah could not have as many generals as they needed. However, this was controlled by splitting the payments of generals after the third. At the time, generals could now be hired for any civilian job accordingly. The fact that the council specifically said promotions from a balancer of three years meant to some that a new class was going to be added. Indeed, a few of those within the council's interests were informed about council balancers in 842. These warriors were balancers or generals who excelled in their fields. The most intelligent, powerful, disciplined, and loyal would be handpicked by the council to help them complete tasks while also protecting them. From the 198 generals between 36 Sarahs, only 12 were elected and only 6 wanted the job. Generals who rejected did not want to leave their people, even if they would be in their aid in the future. If a council balancer retired, they could not retain that status ever again, but it was possible for them to become a balancer or general. Council balancers could never become or be promoted to a council either. In the year 844, generals had now been tasked with slowly decreasing their balancer limit from 150 to 100 by year 858. This would help the economy while also limiting the combat power Sarah could have. Some generals stood no chance in fights due to geographical locations, and the people who wanted to become balancers were not the best at magic at certain parts of Adesia than others. Year 847 marked the Megta model, most effective general tactical advantage, by Macadamian General Alfred Wessex. This model split the Sarah control between generals during whenever possible. One general would train the balancers, one would monitor exportations, one would wander the streets of the public, one would counsel paperwork, one would manage events, one would control the military. Sometimes the ties may intertwine, or a general may have multiple controls over the Sarah. The Megta model scaled for Sarah's size, population, and allies. Macadamia shared this with their allies, and it was leaked before all Sarahs began to take advice from it. Generals were minimalized down by what its current generals believed they needed. The Megta model also allowed generals to demote to a balancer. The year 850 marked the 100 year anniversary of the first ban of councils. To commemorate, a few allied generals crafted a series of refs for the upcoming League of Councils. The 65th League of Councils were presented with a matte gold ref, which they all gladly accepted. These refs were an extensive gift as the council already wore a necklace of loyalty for Adesia. 
Each wreath for the council would be lightened in color until the next generation. The seventh generation have matte white, eighth matte green, then purple, and they made them all the way until the 15th generations of council. Theoretically, they presume the 15th generation council would be around the year 2000. The camaraderie of the generals opted the council to create a yearly gathering of any generals who would like to come. This would ease the tension of a few while also increasing the rivalry of others. Ever since the year 850, invasions between Sarahs has steadily decreased at a linear rate, the action now being known as a Sarahnization. Between the years 850 and 900, there would be more generals deciding to merge their Sarahs together rather than taking over. It was a mutual respect as the negatives between two already allied Sarahs conjoining were massively devalued by the benefits. However, most of these Sarahs were extremely small. A few had already unofficially registered as parts of larger Sarahs next to them by the council. The better of the generals would remain at head while others would become civilians or balancers. Unfortunately, the minority of generals who lusted after the thrill of confrontation or just their greed for superiority had covered the 870s and nearly two more decades with disturbance. Generals of Sarahs began to form alliances to help fight off these war generals, yet the council refused to grant the existence of these alliances. Generals could still indeed help other generals, but creating any type of federations among them was strictly forbidden. This led to a fearful confrontation between the council and the Vindicate generals in 881. The Vindicate generals did not understand why the council would not allow them to formally unite with one another, let alone for boundaries sake. Thus far, the council has been trying to keep Sarahs at a fundamental level. They explain that if Sarahs formed alliances with one another, there would not be any difference than being one mass of Sarah. If anyone with valid intentions were to gain such authority among such a large territory, it would cause a greater corruption more than war. Not to mention that the balancer limit was set to 100. If multiple Sarahs consolidate, their passive military will be so immense that it would take far more than three Sarahs to stop them. In short, the council wanted to keep Sarahs individualized with their own freedoms and expectations, to allow a variety of life between a traveler's explorations through them all. The creation of generals was to maintain their Sarahs' esteem and loyalty. It would also render the council obsolete, as now their focus at trying to not be a government would be eventually forced. The discussions lasted days on ends for months until mid-882. A mix of matches were placed between the strongest Vindicate generals and the council of their Sarah with a total of nine battles. If the generals won, the council had to affirm creating alliances. Nonetheless, if the councils won, the enactment could not be trialed for another hundred years. The final score was six to three, with the three losses being extremely close. One half of these generals remained quiet, but the other half had told their civilians what occurred. The council was not sugarcoating anything and properly disclaimed every minor complaint the billions of Adesians had to shout at them. In 885, Council Gladia Matilda had a speech that ended the constant berating. One of the most quoted statements in Adesian history. We have watched, we have always watched, we will always watch. Our conviction that guides us through our everyday actions, our choices over Adagia's people's lives, over the stars that brighten the night sky, there must be a level of balance, balance that keeps you on your feet and allows us all to move without restrictions. It is a coin with fortune, a force that weakens our strengths. The only way to rid the unwanted outcome is by removing your desire, but no one dares to display that trade-off. Tampering with fortune only amplifies the outcome that you wish to destroy, and that destruction will come when you least expect it. All generals knew that Council Gladio was targeting them, and it was clear that their actions had been playing with elements of life they should have not tampered with. The preceding few years left the silence between the generals of the 27 Seraphs. Contact was limited to only the gatherings the Council held, and other than mandatory confrontations, Generals did not speak to each other outside of their duties. The decade of 890 was historically the most peaceful time. There were ordinary crimes, but not a single invasion of any sort. However, everything returned back to chaos in late 899. 
Castopia's generals sent a huge invasion straight down towards Yakuru during Yakuru's inner reconstruction. A fleet from the northeast and another from the northwest. In the heat of the conflict, Yato being almost directly between the two massive Sarahs, they subsequently cut off all ties to the outside world. The event caused a great amount of controversy against the council, as a few theories echoed about. The most prominent being that they wanted to control the news outputs on Yato's stand. Yato had always been a self-centered Sarah, but no one would ever thought that even that council would go under the radar for a few years. Journals of the mainlands began to display who they approved and felt disdain toward. A huge shift in economic trade occurred between 900 and 912. Becoming a general became a tougher prospect than ever before. Awareness of distant enemies was a huge factor in deciding relative allies. Year 916 had a new refresh of 10 councils who quickly approved many general-made laws that had been pending. The maximum age of a general was capped at 40 and the minimum age was lowered to 20.5. Balancer's prerequisites were lowered to 1.5 years while Lillamere requirements were lowered due to the Megta model. These new laws enhanced the model as now those with wild brain and little brine changed the dynamic in every different angle. This overhaul introduced a new wave of personalities to the field. No longer was each general a giant heap of muscle and force, but smoothing out by more forgiving and acceptable people. The balance shook down the tensions between the civilians and generals and became more respected. Furthermore, as more people who wanted the job, the scoring system had to be raised even higher. The average score was now being 162, and those who scored over 180 proved to be successful in all their days. Yato's scandal was finally brought into light when its previously MIA council showed themselves in a press conference held in Regra. It was said that the generals no longer believed that they should be a part of Adagio's economy. Mostly because of the council's involvement, managing every step of the way and letting no company or individual become too rich. Yato's northwest, Paranku's southwest, is covered by an immense weather phenomenon of the ocean and wind which resists any magical interferences that go through the zone. Yato was surprisingly the only Sera who had no enemies, less to say a few allies who cared for their survival. Their terrain was in a such a position from the planet's tilt that they would have long harvests and short winters. The cherry on top being the near limitless resources within underground mines they did not have to share. Though sharing was never an aspect of the majority Yanian generals. Kostopian and Yakirian generals would hold meetings in Yato to reach some type of agreement. Forgive and forget was the main appeal, but the cries of civilians would always lead them back to attacking the other Sarah. A short summary of their conflict starting from an original nation that had split north and south to completely different islands. They cannot agree on religion and morals leading them to despise the other. Castopia and Yakiru are just over 7,000 miles apart, yet they continue to bicker at each other to take control of, in reality, their ancestors. In year 934, Yato's generals decided they had enough and closed its borders to the Seras. The subtle defenseness from Yato caused Yakirian generals to believe they were siding with Castopia and decided to fortify their lands. However, Castopia continued their journeys through the seas to always have Yakiru under surveillance. This happened for a longer time than it should have as it allowed Lark Karosi to take hold of the Sarah neighboring Castopia, Danlenia, who had been supplying minor resources to Castopia in 954. Because of Castopia's split armies, they were overrun quite quickly by decipients and were marginalized down from 335,000 square miles compared to its previous 1.8 million square miles. All of their generals survived, with half of them escaping to other Sarahs. The generals of Yakuru were the most upset out of the rest and invaded Yato for a quest of taking back Castopia's Joxima. Yato's defenses, however, did not give Yakuru the slightest of chances. Other generals began to calm down Yakuru by actively sending support generals to sit and talk to them, even opting to learn their language. Kostopa and Delania's defeat opened the eyes of all the generals, however the threat of a demon return with such aggression was indeed fearful. Bitter rivalries began to fade, not entirely, but set aside for the most important threat to the people. 
In the year 973, a new band of Yakurus generals had been promoted, all raised off the legends of connection that they had with Kostopia. Their beliefs being a mix of redemption, while others still felt anger towards the fallen Kostopians. Soon enough, a fleet to attack Kurosi's land emerged. The councils argued what would be the right call as now retired generals who knew Yakuru's language would try once again to convince the generals not to attack. Yato would then hold its defenses against Yakuru's advancements through their waters. The generals of Yato were then blasted by two different sides of viewpoints. Let the Yakirians pass through to evade conflict with them or continue to hold your ground to prevent the Yakirians from feeding Kurosi more power. Yato's council could not control the generals again, nor the balancers and the civilians who honored their generals. Yato did not respond to any suggestions, questions, nor gave out any public information on their motives. Unfortunately, the focus on Yato's null objective stance and Yikuru's impending collision with them, a devastating evasion hit Alma. The attack was so severe that the entire island was plunged into the ocean, over 300 million deaths and leaving the Armenian genetic line to the hundreds. Alma's situation was similar to Yato's, but differently by one important factor. Alma was considered by many to be the most religious and prosperous place on Adesia. The connection between the council, generals, and everyone below was well developed. That is, until Kurosi's appearance and a rising tension between himself and Alma. Kurosi renamed Delania to Darku Matu, or Ma'u. His appeals being that a mind clouded by the fear of risk is a tarnished soul, neglecting what Alma had been teaching for his past centuries of existence. Alma was always on the receiving end of Kurosi's attacks. Alma's generals never wanted to send forces within Matu as it was a death trap. Alma's acceptance of foreigners was quite low, but it was a must to receive resources to sustain their losses. An attempt to combat the decipients due to lack of balancer type figures allowed more mercenaries. Nevertheless, the worst soon fell out among them, and black markets began to form. Alma's equivalent to balancers were Elzeklites, pretty much the same as a balancer in every regard, but their identification process, which voided anything the council had to say about them, was efficient to make sure they were able to properly defend their Sarah. But with each passing day, Karos's attacks would become less yet more impactful. The Armenian generals knew tragedy would strike them soon, and chaos rose even from the most vigilant. From the seven generals, a few wanted to export civilians out, while others wanted to stay. A few even causing great editorial mistakes, sending supplies to wrong locations, and even documenting false resources to skew Karosi's gaze from certain vantages. Alma's council could not control, rather, did not attempt to control them. All of the generals' actions collided with the next, and it left them vulnerable to an attack they knew nothing about. Through it all, Karosi had attacked them still, evaporating an entire landmass off the globe. The effects are still felt of as of 983. Almost fall had ridden away more than half of the rivalries that existed between other Seros. The sixth hero's death also being accounted for in Almost final moments of life. Generals became more focused than they had ever been, became stronger, wiser, technical, strategic, even forgiving and supporting towards one another. All but those of Yato, whose civilians knew nothing of the six heroes' arrival or defeat. Yato was then captured internally by Karosi a few years later, and he perfected their already self-entitled lifestyle. At least, that's how the civilians saw it. Yato's defeat in 988 would be the perfect example of a powerful nation being entirely useless without allies. Seeing a general in present-day Adagia, one may overlook the fine-tuning and craftiness that that position has endured, not only in controlling the lives of millions, but controlling those around the world. The opportunity given out just once ever so often to a balancer who seeks a better way of life for their people. To respect the boundaries and manifest obligations over choices. Although being the final addition to Adesia and its people, the existence of generals has never been more impactful than any position created before or after them.